Broadcasting from the Unshackled Studios in Melbourne, this is Wilms Front, brought to you by theunshackled.net. Now here's Tim Wilms. Lucas, we've got you back again. Great to be back, Tim. Thank you for having me. Uh, now, the extreme Marxists uh, in Australia, they've got multiple campaigns and activities on the go. So uh, that's why I wanted to have you back to discuss a, another development. Oh, well, the, they're hope, hopeful, uh, the, the local Antifa Marxist anarchists, that they're, they're going to have a hero homecoming. Uh, Jock Pal Freeman, who's been in jail in uh, Bulgaria, for 11 years for murder, uh, he might be granted parole to or return uh, to Australia, but he, he murdered a local law student in Bulgaria in December 2007, uh, which caused outrage in the, the nation. He was the son of a, a former Socialist Party MP, and of course, in any nation, they don't like foreigners coming in and killing their, their youth. He also injured one. So he's a convicted murderer, yet he's being treated as a hero. Yes, that's true. I mean, look for the last 11 years whilst this man has been in jail. The anarchist community in particular in Australia has held him up as a hero. Uh, Jock Pal Freeman is a little rich kid from Sydney, private school boy who picked up nice little bit of radical chic uh, anarchism and decided to run around the world with it and then he straight up murdered a guy <laughs> he into well, even by his own story which is unconfirmed and uncorroborated by any witnesses right he straight up walked into a fight between two groups of people that he had absolutely nothing to do with in a country that he was only visiting uh, and he had no idea about any of the parties that were involved and straight up just stabbed a guy uh, probably, from what earlier can say, in the back. And um, this is the sort of guy that's a hero to the anarchists in Australia. They've been campaigning for him for 11 years. It's like you say, the anarchists and the Marxists. The Marxists really don't want this guy. <laughs> Only the anarchists are crazy enough to want this guy, and it's because uh, he's um, a good-looking sort who's a little rich, got a little sort of uh, rich boy Sydney vibe about him. You know, a little bit of... Um, sort of don't give a shit charisma going on and that sort of stuff. And, um, yeah, he pretty much looks like a bit like a sociopath. He, um, whilst he was in jail over there, uh, he did various sort of uh, virtue signalling, anarchist stuff. Yes, found at the Bulgarian... Union. A prisoners' association, some sort of prisoners' oh, there is union. No, no real evidence that there's any other members other than himself. But the anarchists in Australia are very good at the fact that they nobody actually cares that much about them to actually fact check any of their stuff. So they've just come pretty much. They've been promoting this guy for ten years, and it is incredible. This yeah. is the hero of the anarchist left in Australia, and to understand that, you have to understand that. Most of the people who run around in black masks, whilst many of them are Marxists and other far leftists, the, the core of them, the hardcore, are the anarchists. They are the most violent political extremists in Australia. Uh, they genuinely believe that pretty much everyone is a fascist and that fascists deserve to be, at the very least, kicked into the gutter and have their faces smashed into the curb until their skulls are broken. Uh, these are insane people. Uh, they believe that all levels of authority within the state, within capitalism, with anything at all, are illegitimate. And so therefore killing anybody, particularly police and government officials, is morally and ethically justified. Uh, and, and this is their hero. Uh, the problem isn't with these complete, complete lunatics. The problem isn't that they simply exist. The problem is that so many people within the mainstream continue to humour them, continue to associate with them. Right. These people are not normal political actors. These people are not rational people. They are not people who deserve to have any sort of say in our society. They need to be, if anything, locked up in mental, institu mental institutions. Yeah, let's uh, go back to not... the actual uh, murder incident. So he was in Sofia, which is the, the capital of Bulgaria, and he, he, he was just apparently out and about, though he had a butter knife with him, he'd been uh, drinking, and he allegedly saw a, a gang of Bulgarian 
youths assaulting uh, two Roma men. Now, uh, Roma is the plural of the, the Romani people who are the, the gypsies in uh, Bulgaria. And gypsies... It's a they... correct term for gypsies. Yes, yes. yes. And, and gypsies, the, the mainstream media tries to paint them as uh, victims of years of oppression, but they're well known for being petty criminals, uh, vagrants. They're they're despised in not just uh, Bulgaria, but other uh, Eastern European countries. And they've recently been uh, expelled from uh, France. And this is yeah. just uh, what Jock's story is. There's no CCTV footage, no cooperation. <laughs> and so he voluntarily yeah. decided to uh, defend these uh, two gypsy men. He didn't know why these, these youths were attacking these gypsies. For all we know, they could have been trying to, to rob uh, these years we 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 don't we don't know but he decided mm -hmm. to to get involved get his his knife out and these use they weren't armed because uh jock was uh, attacked with uh, concrete pavement tiles which obviously they got from by definition the the no, concrete okay. pavement so these use were unarmed and he came with a weapon he came to a fight with a a deadly weapon that's right and the it's important to point out that nobody can corroborate his story. There are two other people there with him. They fled the country. The woman who has uh, been interviewed since and talked about it since, she said that uh, she was uh, recharging her phone or checking her phone or something at the time. Uh, and she can't corroborate Jock's story. Uh, so under Jock's own story, which, where he's trying to paint himself as the hero, right? he walked up behind some people who were in a fight who he had no part of, had no idea who they were, and stabbed the whiter guy uh, in the back, by the early accounts, by what I've heard. Uh, he essentially went into a fight that had absolutely nothing to do with him. This is by his own account, where he is trying to paint himself as a hero. He went into a fight that had nothing to do with him, attacked some quote-unquote fascists, who turned out one of them was the son of a socialist uh, politician. And... and now he's a hero to the anarchists in Australia for this. Uh, yeah. Essentially, be, yeah. Hey, like you have anarchist, anarchist groups in Australia, the biggest promoter probably of the Jock Pell Freeman myth has been um, sort of a slack bastard. Yes, he's whatever, been he's tweeting uh, ferociously uh, about oh, it. Oh, he's been behind him for the last 11 years. He's been promoting his cause for the last 11 years. And you've got to remember, this guy, had, um, under his name Andy Fleming or whatever pseudonym the idiot decides to use, Right, he is one of the more prominent uh, anarchist organisers in Australia, if that's not a contradiction in terms. And he says that uh, this guy, who essentially stabbed these guys a uh, year ago, is uh, a hero. And Andy Fleming ends up getting quoted uh, in mainstream political um, uh, publications. He's been quoted in The Guardian many times on extremism, on political extremism. <laughs> All right. A guy who essentially says that another guy who murdered someone and straight up murdered him and said, I straight up murdered that guy uh, and, and did it for political reasons, according to him at least, if, although I'm suspicious, I think it was simply he was a sociopath, uh, and has promoted his case for over a decade. This guy gets quoted by the Guardians as a political extremism expert. Uh, I guess he is a political extrem ex extremism expert in some senses, but he's also the promoter of an ideology which says it's ethically okay to kill police and government officials. And right? Jock and is, people. yeah, he's a convicted murderer. He was convicted yeah. of murder yeah, in 2008. Sort of like, yeah, there is absolutely no sort of subtlety here. There is no nuance. This guy is a convicted murderer. He murdered someone. Unprovoked for no other reason than whatever fantasy had currently stumbled through his adult brain. Uh, and, and he is a hero to people in Australia, particularly people who are behind such groups like the White Rose Society, who recently were collaborating with the ABC to try and expose right-wingers inside the National Party. Uh, and he, people who have backed this guy are collaborators with the mainstream in Australia. And that is just such an incredible thing to think about. Uh, that the mainstream of Australian politics is willing to associate with people who promote this guy. 
Yeah, the ABC 7.30, they aired a story last oh week about God, Jock's parole. Seen? Yes, I did, and they have his parents. They're, they're basically saying that he's just another Australian who was uh, banged up uh, abroad, uh, and it, w it was just a, a a terrible set of circumstances. And they actually, he pleaded self-defense at his... A murder trial where self defense is like, yeah, yeah I know. Them. Like, how is like self defense so is when people come up to you? He look like Joan of Arc. Um, he's just absolutely insane that the defenders of this man, the defenders of this murderer, the defenders of this criminal who took another human being's life for no other reason than whatever ridiculous political bullshit someone had brainwashed into his head. Right, is supported by people here in Australia who work at universities. Right? People in Australia who are treated as rational political actors and legitimate sources by members of the establishment media in Australia. Uh, it is insane that this is allowed to continue on. It is insane that people like this are allowed to act in our society without being excluded as the pariahs that they damn well should be. We should name his uh, victim, Andre Monov. Now, they imply his uh, Annika supporters that the only reason he was prosecuted for murder because he was the son of an MP, that there was some corrupt elitist conspiracy against him. But the prosecution, <laughs> they wanted him, him locked away for, for life because that's not normally what you get for murder. He got 20 years, which is pretty light for a murder conviction. Yeah considering that it was entirely unprovoked. Okay, this is the thing. If you, Tim, walked up to someone in Melbourne right now and stabbed them to death, um, okay, and you did it for ostensibly political reasons, pretty sure a lot of people would be calling for you to go to jail for more than 11 years if it was entirely unprovoked, with no reason or cause whatsoever. Yeah, imagine so if he was a nationalist. An, an imaginary, uh, imaginary fight that nobody can um, back up, that none of the supposed gypsies who were being attacked have ever come forward, that none of the people who were his friends in the area can back up his story. Um, that even the fight itself is suspect. Right? The idea that this guy was actually, in his words, defending some poor Roma from some evil right-wing um, <laughs> socialists, <laughs> and uh, that he just... <clears throat> The guy's a straight-up sociopathic murderer. And the thing is, is that you look at what the ABC, in particular, has been reporting recently about this. You look at what the ABC has been pushing forward as the main sort of uh, their line, their narrative on the Jock Palfman story. It doesn't hurt that he's photogenic. Right. Um, yes, he is still. Uh, uh, supposedly, he's been he locked up in horrific uh, conditions, but well, he's 32 now. He still looks, you know, pretty handsome. This is the thing. If this guy had been in such a, a, an awful, terrible system where just because he killed the son of a politician, he's therefore been uh, sentenced to be tortured forever and that he would look a little worse, he'd probably be dead. Uh, the truth is, is that it looks like the Bulgarian prison system isn't that bad. Mm. By the way, how much he complains and whinges and has been whining about it for 10 years to whatever anarchist wherever in the world would actually listen to him. Uh, and anarchists all over the world have been supporting this guy. They've held little protests of five or six people in a dozen different countries over the course of the last decade. Uh, this is an ideology that has murdered countless people. The only reason they haven't murdered as much as their Marxist cousins is because they don't uh, want to adopt state power in the same way that the communists have. Uh, no. And they actually came the closest that they ever have to actual power in Spain in the 1930s. They murdered tens of thousands. They tortured priests and raped sons. But that is the ideology of anarchism. This is what these people are. And it's not really all that surprising that this guy turned into a murderer when his head was filled with such crap. He was initially denied uh, parole, but that was overturned by a, an appeal court of, of three uh, judges. And then he was moved to immigration uh, detention because he hadn't got a, a passport because it was obviously being confiscated and the Australian authorities were on their way to give him one. But of course, uh, there is widespread outrage about this uh, granting of a uh, parole, given that, as I said before, it's a, a foreigner who's come in and killed a, a local youth. So the prosecutor general of uh, Bulgaria, Sotir uh, 
Tsarov is appealing to the Supreme Court of the, the nation and the Bulgarian parliament is actually looking to change uh, parole laws so there's more uh, judicial oversight. And they, uh, uh, going back to the ABC 730 piece, uh, they, they want uh, Maurice Payne, the foreign minister, and uh, Scott Morrison to lobby on his behalf, basically saying that, well, they're, they're wanting the 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 Australian government that they despise, the, the highest people, and from the conservative side of politics who they despise even more, to, uh, to lobby for one of their uh, anarchist comrades. That's right. I think Maurice Payne, uh, according to an ABC article that I recently read, was, uh, did actually attempt to approach Bulgarian authorities on behalf of Jock Pro Freeman and was rebuffed, quite rightly so. Right, so you have a senior minister, one of the most senior ministers in a supposedly conservative government, attempting to intervene on behalf of a straight-up unprovoked murderer right, who murdered for political reasons in a foreign country, a foreign national, for no other reason than she believes that his parole is being unfairly held up. Right, a supposed conservative minister standing up for an anarchist murderer. Uh, and that really kind of tells you how mainstream these people have managed to go because nobody ever mentions just how extreme they are. Nobody ever mentions that these people want to destroy literally everything. Okay, anarchism began in the, well, in reality probably began with the first International uh, Working Man's Association in the late 19th century. Uh, it was constantly big fights between Bakunin and Marx and huge sorts of brawls, which is kind of irrelevant today, but they moved on to propaganda of the deed, and they assassinated king after king, emperor after emperor, businessman after businessman, policeman after policeman, over and over again, all over Europe, for a century, before they finally ran out of steam. And it was only really after Marxism discredited itself with the social Soviet Union that they actually came back into fashion in the 70s and the 80s with the sort of the punk movement and that sort of stuff. But these people are a disease. Uh, it's like that uh, line out of uh, The Big Lebowski about talking about, well, say what you like about the tenets of National Socialism, at least it's an ethos. Well, say what you like about the tenets of Marxism, but at least it's an ethos. Right? Mar anarchism is just disgusting. It is a disgusting philosophy, a disgusting thing to think about. And it has caused nothing but death and destruction everywhere that it has reared its head on the earth. Uh, and Jock Pell Freeman is an example of anarchism. And he's being supported by Maurice Payne, the foreign minister of a supposedly conservative government. Yeah. Right? It's being backed up by the ABC. Right? Over and over again, the amount of sympathetic articles never mentioning the fact that this guy is a political extremist. Can you imagine if he was a neo-Nazi who'd murdered yeah. a gypsy in Bulgaria? Or oh, just a, a nationalist. Because... Uh, the... any, even vaguely right-wing, and he'd got into a fight with someone somewhere in Europe and killed them regardless of their ethnicity. <laughs> they wouldn't be Maurice Payne going and talking to the to the um, the Bulgarian authorities. They wouldn't be the ABC running show, broadcast after broadcast, online article after online article, trying to pump up this guy's tires. It's also uh, the Guardian it's as well. It's disgusting. Well, the Guardian isn't actually that surprising. Mm. Uh, at least the ABC is uh, taxpayer funded. The Guardian has so many extremists on its staff that I'm surprised that it hasn't really just started uh, just simply waving a red flag every time you open the website. Uh, Maurice uh, Payne, she, she clearly hasn't done her, her due diligence. She's basically been sucked in by oh, the, the, the propaganda. What ever does? They never bother to actually do any investigation into far-left extremists, even when the far-left extremists are assaulting them and members of their family. Tony Abbott never mentioned that Socialist Alternative was the people who attacked his own sister outside an event that he was trying to raise funds at. And he, he was headbutted it as well. Sister. Yeah. Uh, and ripped her jacket off, assaulted her in multiple ways, and nobody was ever charged, nobody was ever arrested, and Tony Abbott never put any pressure on and never even named the extremists who did it. And never even named the extremists who actually organised that attack. Uh, and they never do it. Even, uh, look, even after he was headbutted by an anarchist in Tasmania. They never mentioned anarchism. Well, the Liberal Party never mentioned anarchism. The ABC mentioned it in sort of a, <laughs> look, this guy's one of us kind of way. All right? They never mentioned pretty much the most extreme, and even anarchists will tell you, it's the most po extreme political ideology in the world. Uh, there is no, uh, it justifies all violence, even though they call themselves non-violent. 
because they just simply redefine violence to be not anything that they do. And Jock was also uh, a suspect in a 2004 stabbing in Chatswood in, in Sydney. The, the two uh, victims of that, thankfully they survived, they were adamant that uh, Pal Freeman, he was the offender. And is there any evidence that these uh, two men who were, who were stabbed, uh, uh, allegedly by Pal Freeman, uh, James Attack and Matthew Font, were fascists? No, of course not. Uh, you have to remember from the anarchist perspective, almost everyone is a fascist because they believe in any sort of move towards any sort of state power whatsoever is inherently in and of itself a form of fascism. That means that over the time, particularly like as the um, Spanish Civil War broke out, in which they would end, the anarchists would end up fighting alongside the Marxists against the nationalists of Franco. Uh, the anarchists in Madrid were not only calling... Um, Franco and the Catholic uh, sort of integralists and the Carlists and the military people and the Phalangists, they weren't calling them, they weren't just calling them fascists, they were also calling the Marxists fascists and shooting them in Madrid on the eve of the Civil War. There are different street fights with guns between anarchists and communists because the anarchists believed that the communists were actually fascists. Everyone is a fascist to these people. All right, almost anyone who disagrees with them on anything at any point is a fascist, and they believe that all the killing any fascist in any circumstances is always justified. Um, so their ideology pretty much justifies murder against anyone I don't like today. Well, as I mentioned at the beginning, he'll get a hero's uh, welcome if he gets back to Australia, and he'll probably be on the yeah, the the anarchist or even Marxist speaking circuit. And which, in that case, I hope, uh, well, if he does that and he writes a book, that it's confiscated those proceeds for uh, f proceeds of crime. <laughs> that would never happen. You really yeah, they like that? After him. They they go after Chopper Reed for writing books about crime and making money off it. They would never go after this guy. Even They're though he's a murderer. Class, boy. A murderer. Yeah. He, he went he's into a foreign... middle class rich boy from Sydney. Upper middle class rich boy leftist from Sydney. Right. He, <laughs> in other words, he matches the demographic of about half the journalists in Australia. <laughs> but of course the reality is if a, if a nationalist activist even touches a political opponent then that's that that's enough for the the mainstream media and the, the politicians to say they they must be uh, disavowed of course well you only have to look at the fact that um, the event held by milo yiannopoulos in 2015 in australia i think it's 2015 uh december 2015 maybe. Uh, 17. And, uh, se oh that was 17 okay yeah and uh, that was held and the police tried to charge the organizers with sixty thousand dollars because their event was attacked by Marxists. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't try and charge the Marxists for that. Right? And at the same time, these same groups will be organize, organize attacks on all sorts of different events. If somebody tried to attack their their events, their event wouldn't be charged. Uh, the fact that most of these people have gone through um, universities with the people who end up running the police, who end up running the newspapers, who end up writing about them in the newspapers, uh, the people who run the public service, the people who are in a whole range of different areas across the law and the legal system. Uh, they go to university with these people and they have the same sorts of worldviews. Uh, and, yeah, and there are already years a... Yeah, in the local Antifa here in Melbourne, there's already a convicted uh, stabbing killer amongst them. Yeah, uh, David Hollis. I'm not sure whether he's actually a, um, a full-on anarchist, although I certainly think he leans in that direction. He's associated with uh, Sue Munro, who was attached to the Trotskyist uh, Socialist Party, with Stephen Jolly, who, of course, was recently outed as a... Well, recently, let's just be careful, uh, has an alleged family violence issue, which um, has not been proven but caused him to be thrown quite vigorously out of the Victorian Socialist Organisation, even though he then um, says he quit. Um, so there's, there's all these people are, are connected. David Hollis, of course, in the late, early 90s, he, um, he killed a woman, an elderly woman with a knife after going on a rampage and I believe stabbing six other people, although uh, that number may be incorrect. We have to be careful because David gets very defensive about this and starts commenting 
all over YouTube and uh, Facebook message boards saying that he's not actually a murderer. He was never convicted of mur- he was never convicted of murder because when he was convicted of killing this elderly woman that he shoved a knife into, uh, they found him to be mentally unwell. Yes, he, he's a convicted killer, <laughs> so not a murderer. He doesn't, the moral, he doesn't have the moral culpability of murder at all. He just unprovoked stabbed someone to death an elderly woman who did nothing to him and was just a completely random person. And mainstream media uh, never yeah, reports that. Yeah, the extreme left is more than willing to accept people like him back into their ranks. So why on earth wouldn't they be willing to accept Joe Pearl Freeman, who essentially just straight up stabs someone? And this is what most people on the right need to understand. Right? On the left, they're more than willing to accept people who stab people to death back into their ranks. As long as they feel like they did for a good reason, or they've tried to make up for it since, or their heart's in the right place. Uh, they don't care about your little rules of, oh, I don't, want the, I don't want to be a hypocrite, or I want to make sure that we go by parliamentary procedure, or I want to make sure that we don't break the rules of the cricket game. They don't care if you stand up and scream about what hypocrites they are. Uh, they will support straight up murderers. And especially if those murderers are considered to be people that murdered people like you. Yeah, uh, they, want they have no shame. Like you to die. Uh, and this is the most, the biggest sort of um, revelation that you can have about the extreme left in Australia and how terrifying it is that they are so far into the establishment. They want people like you to die. Uh, the only reason they aren't willing to go and kill you is because they think it would be too much trouble for them personally, currently, to do so. They want you to die. Well, uh, thank you for another you. Uh, expose, uh, Lucas. I'm going to I'm going to have cool. to shut you up now because we're on a on a on a deadline uh, here. But but thank you for uh, enlightening us uh, again. And but there's still more we need to talk about the uh, the the mining conference uh, blockade. So I'll get you on another time to have a have a rant about that. But yeah, that's all for now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tim. Thanks for tuning in to Wilmsfront. Visit timwilms.com or Rational Rise TV to view the archive of episodes. And keep visiting theunshackled.net to view all our shows and to keep up with the latest real news and analysis.